Hi, my name is Zi Hai Li. I'm the founding director of the Panatania Institute for Immune Oncology, the James Comprehensive Cancer Center, the Wexner Medical Center at the great Ohio State University. Let me begin by telling you some really frightening statistics about cancer. If the current trend continues, one out of four of us will die of cancer. In fact, all of us, that means 100% of us, will be affected in some way by this dreadful disease. But there we see in the history of the struggle of mankind against this disease that the cancer as we know it can be cured. I wish to indeed leave that hope with you. And this hope has to do with our own body defense mechanism, our immune system. So whenever I discuss the wonder and the power of the immune system, I always begin by asking this simple question. What is the greatest triumph in medicine? The answer is the global eradication of smallpox in 1979. It was a disease that killed about 300 million people in the 20th century alone. Now, this feat was achieved not by any fancy medicines, but by vaccination to train the body's immune system in fighting and eliminating the virus that causes smallpox. So what about cancer? Can our immune system be trained to overcome cancer? For over two centuries, scientists have been trying to answer this very question using immunotherapy. What is immunotherapy, you may ask? It is the wide range of treatments that turn on our immune system to fight disease. But this journey to utilize our immune system as a medicine for cancer has not been a smooth one. Let me tell you about two people I was privileged to know. The first was a young man I treated when I was a young attending physician. He was a 30-year-old, incredibly well-trained athlete and cyclist who came under my care in 1999. The second was a young medical student in her last year of medical school, whom we treated about 10 years later. Both had stage four melanoma, a form of deadly skin cancers. For the young cyclist, the only treatment I could offer in 1999 was the medicine to make him feel better, but I could not really treat his cancer. Sadly, the young man died several months later. But thanks to the advances in immunotherapy, between then and 2011, we were able to treat the medical student and her cancer was completely melted away. She was able to graduate from medical school, get married and finish her residency. She's now practicing medicine, a dream of her lifetime. Same disease, treated only 10 years apart, but completely different outcomes due to advances in immunotherapy. Now, the immunotherapy strategy works for the old and young, both men and women. In the case of President Jimmy Carter, he was cured of his melanoma that had spread already to his brain, while Emily Whitehead was cured of her terminal leukemia with cell therapy called CAR T cells. She was literally brought back to life from her deathbed. So for the first time, medical community is beginning to use the word cure for some deadly stage four cancers, including lung cancer, kidney cancer, head and neck cancer, melanoma, and others. Thus, a new era of cancer medicine has arrived where we focus on treating the immune system, not cancer per se, which is unlike the cancer-centric strategies like surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation therapy. Importantly, the immune system can remember what it saw in the past and learn from it. It is able to mount a far greater attack when it sees the same trouble a second time. Many people believe, therefore, that immunotherapies are now at the forefront and offer the best chance for cure of cancer through preventing cancer relapse. The science of studying the immune system and treating cancer with immunotherapy is called immuno-oncology. There's another piece of sobering news, however. We have won a few battles, but not yet the war against cancer. Only 20% of patients respond to current immunotherapy drugs. Why the other 80% don't respond? Who are the other 80%? Do we have to treat everyone with these expensive drugs 
in order to save a minority of patients. We're still far away from realizing the dream that a shot in the arm, just like smallpox vaccine, can prevent all cancers from ever developing in the first place. So it is with the high expectations and ambition that we work to answer many of those questions and to bring the hope of cancer cures to you. To do so, the Ohio State University, the James Comprehensive Cancer Center, and the Wexner Medical Center launched an unprecedented program in immuno-oncology in 2019. And this is called Panatonin Institute for Immuno-Oncology, or PIIO. Working with everyone at Ohio State, as well as our tremendous philanthropic partner, Panatonia, I'm very proud to lead this initiative to harness the body's immune system to fight cancer at all levels, from prevention to treatment and survivorship. We have a growing research team that already involves 70 plus physicians and scientists working in the field of immuno-oncology. 15 of them are new members. We will recruit 25 additional, the best and brightest minds from around the nation to join us. Together with our trainees and staff, we have a formidable team for research and discovery in this exciting field. We have expertise in diverse areas of immuno-oncology, including cell therapy, cancer vaccines, immunotherapy of leukemia and lung cancers, as well as immunogenomics, which is a subject to study the relationship between the DNA and the immune system. So what specifically are we doing in immuno-oncology? Let's assume for a moment that our immune system is just like a car. We add fuel to the car in the form of billions of killer cells like T cells, natural killer cells, to treat cancer. Now we educate the driver so the car, that is the immune system, can be steered to find wherever cancers are. And then we release the brake by using immune checkpoint blockers so the car can go and destroy the cancers. So how do we discover and invent the next big thing in immuno-oncology? We both build on what we already know and we look outside the box. So take the phenomenon that solid tumors are like wounds. Wounds are covered by scabs, in other words, by blood clots. These clots are initiated by the body's coagulation system and the platelets in the blood. And just like wounds, cancer have a clear presence of both immune cells and platelets in them. In fact, too many platelets and the formation of blood clots around the cancer are bad signs which are often associated with bad prognosis. So the question is, can platelets be the villain, the bad guy in immuno-oncology? Work from my own laboratory has indeed shown that this is the case. So we found that platelets usurp the immune system via a molecule called GARP. Well, now GARP is a protein, not the character Robin Williams played in this 1982 movie, The World According to GARP. So let's take a look at this molecule more closely. Here we see two white blood cells on this cover picture that are going to destroy tumor cells. And they are unfortunately stopped by platelets through the GABA molecule. Well, the good news is that we now have already made a drug that blocks GARP. Work in my laboratory shows that this GARP off drug could treat cancers that don't respond to current immunotherapy. We hope to test this concept in the clinics within a year. Another discovery has to do with one of the oldest wonder drugs in medicine, aspirin. As an over-the-counter medicine for treatment of arthritis and prevention of heart attacks and strokes, the use of aspirin has been linked with cutting down death in colon cancer. What is impressive is that study has showed that aspirin is beneficial for everyone, regardless of gender, age, or body mass index. So, is aspirin an immuno-oncology drug? We found recently indeed that it could be the case. It turns out that by blocking platelet function, aspirin can kick out the stop sign so that immuno-oncology car, if you will, can drive forward and immunotherapy can work. So we have found new tricks that this old dog can play. We're very excited to test this idea in our clinics. Of course, 
there's so much more exciting work happening in the Pentatonian Institute for Immune Oncology. We are building four research intense centers focusing on cell therapy and gene therapy, as well as conducting fundamental cutting edge research and bridging the gap between laboratory research and clinical medicine. Now, for those of you who care about numbers, we have some statistics from our scorecard in our first year that might interest you. We have secured $30 million in research grants from the National Institutes of Health. Our PIO members have launched more than 25 new clinical trials, moving the research from bench to clinical bedsides. Our members have published more than 265 manuscripts in peer-reviewed scientific journals, sharing a wealth of information across the globe, and created 19 new inventions in cancer immunotherapy. Now, for those of you who find the numbers a bit out of context, I just want to reassure you that we are very pleased with the tremendous progress our team has made. We will continue to drive forward. So yes, there are amazing things happening at The Ohio State University. We have bold initiatives and exciting programs, thanks to your support. The vision of the Panatana Institute for Immune Oncology is to eliminate the cancer as we know it. And while I'm here because of Panatonia, I'm also here because of the patients I told you about, the cyclists, the medical student, and the countless others I did not mention. I'm privileged to lead the Panatonia Institute for Immune Oncology in a new era of cancer medicine. I'm thankful for the whole Panatonia community. I'm excited to embark on this incredible journey with all of you. Our mission won't be stopped by COVID-19 or any other challenges on our way. And together we can create a cancer-free world. Thank you very much. <laughs>